come to DEFCON. If you're here for a good talk, <laughs> you've been scammed. <laughs> Just want to let you know. So I didn't know I was talking here until 10 o'clock yesterday in the morning. So here I am talking about something I know nothing about, but I have sweeties. So <laughs> this will go well. So what's this crap all about? I'm a software developer. You can say, we're sorry. I do back-end development, not because I want to, but because I suck at UX, and the only thing I can write, uh, people at the back, please, please, come forward, come forward, please, please, come. you're not in the shot, come. You, you can come forward. I do software development for, for companies, I do really boring stuff, I write APIs, I create bugs, I annoy uh, project managers, and I miss deadlines. If any of that resonates with you and you want to level up that, come see me afterwards. I can tell you how to bring people to tears without even effort. <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I noticed over my almost three decades career is that somewhere along the line, fun left the building. And with fun, I mean not bursting out in tears every time I opened the laptop and went, oh, fuck, not this again. Okay, so for me, for me, when I started out with programming, the very first program that I wrote was in GW Basic, and I put my name on the screen, just my name, from code that I had copied from a book in the library, and I copied like, like my ass. So it took me days to figure out why wasn't it working, what did I spell wrong, all that. People in the back, please, um, forward, 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 forward. I can't, I can't, I can't go and do this. Right, if, you, if you're too far away. So, yeah, I got hard shit as well, so watch it. So, um, just, just out of interest, who does not have good medical aid? <laughs> okay, I will, I will throw something soft at you. So, the rest, <laughs> sorry. So, anyway, so I remember when I wanted to spend time behind my computer. I remember when it was actually fun to go and switch on the thing. I remember my mum yelling at me, not even I can use that language, to, to, to go to bed now because I've been sitting in front of the uh, computer for, for a, a little while. So it used to be fun, right? It used to be something that I wanted to do and I wanted to get into. And somewhere along it disappeared because we started using cuck like C Sharp or Java, you know. So, so we, we, use, we use all this stuff. Who's a .NET developer here? <laughs> Fucking losers. But anyway, so, so the thing is, we, we, we kind of start using these things because we're forced to do this at work, and it's not really fun anymore. So honestly, if, 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 you, if you think about this, when's the last time? You're at the back. You're at the back. Come forward, please, people, come forward. I can't, I can't reach that far. So the thing is, when's the last time that you opened your computer and started doing something just for fun, just, just for yourself with no purpose whatsoever, literally just to try something out? Come on, who, who, who's got a story like that? Anybody? Please don't have a story because you will fuck up my talk. So... <laughs> <laughs> you, you can tell us your story later, okay. <laughs> so so what, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I set out to do is I set out to find ways to use the stuff that I'm forced to use at work to have a little bit of fun. Because that way I bullshit my manager into thinking that what I'm doing is work-related and my expenses on, on Udemy and stuff is work-related. And, and I'm, just, I'm just doing my best to be a better developer, man. So get off my fucking back. So this stuff is important. I, I need to learn new things, right? Are you, are you, are you with me? Here you go. It's yours. Okay, so now, if you want the code, and I recommend you use someone else's computer to run this on, but you can get the code if you want. It's somewhere on um, Git, Git Steel, Git, what's the play? Git GitHub. So GitHub, GitHub, GitHub has it. And it's obviously in chat TTP and stuff by the way then uh, as well. So you can just go and say chat TTP make me a fun program and all my shit will come up. I'm very sure of that. 
So I'm going to use something called Go. Are there any Go developers here? Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't comment on my code, okay? So just, just don't. For everybody else, this is best practice Go code. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, wow, that was quite a reaction. Thanks a lot. So I'm going to use Go. I'm going to use something called EBIT Engine or EBIT. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's it's a thing that moves bits around an engine thing. So it's, it's out there. If you're interested in learning Go, Free Code Camp has got a bafokta video that you have to go watch. It's it's like seven hours, but after that you can legitimately call yourself a Go developer and you can double your salary. So it's it's really worth learning. I love. Just so he's, the timer just said nine seconds remaining. Um, so, so I would recommend that you go look at Go. If you want to play with EBIT, they've got this little cheat sheet thing that you can go play with. And the cheat sheet shows you how to cheat at EBIT. It's fucking amazing how they came up with that name. I can't believe it. So um, does anybody want some sweeties? There we go. There we go. So, and then there's a couple that way. Okay, so I use... I use um, this IntelliJ IDE, but you don't have to. You can use Visual Studio Code. It's got phenomenal support for Go. It really works very well. If you haven't looked at Go yet, you really should. I don't know what programming language you use, but it sucks. Um, Go, Go sucks a little bit, but not as much as what you're using. I can promise you that. Okay, so if, you, if you've ever worked with me, you know that I'm cuck at all programming languages, and I've used a lot of them. So if I tell you that Go sucks the least, that's like a gold standard, and you should, you should definitely take me serious on that. So, um, and, and just to make my point, I'm just going to throw some stuff into the audience and see what happens. Ooh, sorry about that. We're going to miss that person. Um, so let's, let's, let's look at some Go code first of all. Okay, so... There we go. How's that? We can, we can all almost see that, okay? People at the back can see it, right? Perfect. So this is best practice code once again. <laughs> so what we have is we have a main function, which is your main function. That's where shit starts. That's all you need to know about Go. Wherever things go wrong, it started at main. I can promise you it started at main, and that is where it went wrong. Sort of, kind of. Oh, fuck. The, the, the photo tiny is here. Does everybody wave? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm printing some stuff to the screen, and I can run it, and it's going to magically print some stuff to the screen here at the bottom. You can all read it because it's nice, big, and fat text. There we go. Da, 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 it's all done. So what you need to know about Go is there's a main function. The main function is the main function. Okay. So, so you guys are awesome. You can be consultants as well. You come, you come see me afterwards. I'll teach you how to put the con in consultant. It's very easy. Okay. So, next up. Well, uh, 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 uh. Okay. So, this is code I stole. Uh, fr from there, that, <laughs> that idiot put it, put it on the web. And then I fucked it up. But it, it's still here. And I want to show you something about Go. So, so what is, what is our big thing in Go? The main function. All right. So, so once again, we have a main function. There we go. It's for you. So once again, we have a main function. And in the main function, we do things. So when things go wrong in Go, where does it go wrong? Main. Fucking A. This is awesome. This is so easy. This is a smart crowd. All right. You guys should get into IT. You've got a future. All right. So what do we do? We make a window of a certain size. We give it a title. Everybody knows what a window is. Everybody knows what a window title is. If you don't, get the fuck out. So then we go and we say, okay, we're going to try to run something. And if there's an error, we're going to log it as a fatality because we love Mortal Kombat. So this is all you need to know about EBIT engine. So it hides a lot of the stuff from you. And it's platform agnostic. And it runs on WebAssembly. On, on, it runs on... On Mac, it runs on Linux. So what's that, that cuck? Um, win, wind blows. It run, win, 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 Windows. It runs on Windows. So you can you can work on any platform that you want, and it will look equally shitty. But what we, what we need to remember is there's a main function. We do stuff in the main function. That's where things go. 
Wrong. All right. Awesome. Splendid. Now, with Go, you don't have um, object orientation or any other kind of stuff. You have these structs, which are like structures, which are like records, which are like little thingies that you put shit in. And then it remembers the thingies, and you can add some features to the thingies. And how you add features to the thingies is you say, I want to attach a function. I want to create a function that is going to receive a copy of my structure, and I'm going to add a function called update. It's going to return an error, and it's going to return null. So who works in a programming language that supports null? Right. Null is very old school, OK? We now talk about null. So no, all the cool kids talk about no. So so if your language is no, uh, uh, no is draw. Okay, so you want to go no. That's that's the cool thing. Okay, um, just just know that. So I'm, I don't want to go into exactly how Go works because we don't have a lot of time for that. But what I want to show you is the basic structures that you can use to start putting stuff together for yourself. Now remember. Our ultimate goal is to have a little bit of fun with this. But we also want to make it so that people think that what we are doing is work. So, whoop, missed you, missed you, and missed you. OK. So what do you think update does? It does fuck all. Can't you tell? What kind of developers are you? It returns fuck all. So it does fuck all, all right? So it's important to know that things do nothing, OK? What does draw do? It doesn't do nothing. What does draw do? It prints something on the screen. I love that. All right. So, and layout? <laughs> fuck knows what it does. But you have to have it, otherwise things don't work. So <laughs> now, now. If we run this, and if it runs, because, you know, I never know. Okay, all right. So, with very little effort, we have a window that prints something that will work on Mac, Windows, Linux, and the web. It's written in Go, so you can charge 15 times what you would in any other language you can charge, because nobody knows what the hell's going on in Go, and because it's got nil not null. And, and, and that's the big thing, right? And then we can close it, and that's it. So what, what did we have? We had an empty structure. We had an update. We had a draw. We had a layout. And then we had a main, because main is the main function. All right, just keep, keep up, keep up. See if you can keep up. OK, so now we go, and we see if we can add something to this. All right, now, there's, there's, there's a couple of smarty pants here. What's happening? In the init function, there's an image being loaded somewhere, all right? And this is, this is where, where I really like Go, from the, from the simple perspective that I have to deal with errors where they happen. If you work in something like um, uh, C Sharp or Java, right? If you work in those old languages with no, then you can just bubble up exceptions. Right? And, 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 and exceptions are just a waste of time. Because exceptions can be thrown and rethrown and rethrown and rethrown and thrown again. And eventually, you throw in so much exceptions, you just keep throwing up because of exceptions. Because you don't know where the hell the exception is going and how you're going to debug that shit, which is very difficult. I work as a consultant at companies. I charge them per day to work there, and I fucking charge them. So for me, the faster I can do work, the quicker I can get it done, the more money I make for the day. Because if I only spend an hour working today and I charge for nine, that's not bad. <laughs> So, but if you work if you work with Java or C Sharp, then you're going to spend the whole fucking nine hours working, and and that's that's just not cool. Okay, so I like the fact that I have to deal with errors where they happen or not. I can also just go like fuck it, I don't care, and go will go. Well, you're the developer; it's your foot that we're shooting off. Let's go for it, buddy. So, I love the fact 
that I have error handling where errors happen and I'm not bubbling up somewhere. That's something I like about Go. And this is also just to make it relevant to my bosses. Eventually, they're going to watch this talk and go like, what the fuck are you doing? So I can say, no, I'm actually teaching people Go best practice. <laughs> so now that we've loaded the image, we have the structure for our little game again. And because our game does nothing, there's nothing in the structure, OK? Now, what does update do? <laughs> nothing. All right. Update just returns nil. Nil is cooler than null because? Nil's faster to type. Remember, time is of essence here, okay? So people, people got to gotta, gotta think. Ah. There we go, got that one in the eye. <laughs> All right, so now we draw the image. We draw the image. We do the layout thing, and the layout thing has got your world view and perspective and all that. I don't want to get into that because it takes forever. But what is interesting is if we look at main, main hasn't changed, right? So we, we create the window, we create a title, and we say run the game. And the only thing that I've changed there is how we trap the error. So I say, if assigning the error means the error is not null, log a fatality. Okay, who hasn't played Mortal Kombat? Okay, so you guys all know what fatality is. It's like, it's like when you start a new c -sharp project. You fucked. So fatality <laughs> is exactly the same kind of thing, right? So we haven't changed anything, but with very little effort, once again, if it runs, we can load an image and we can display it in the window. And again, remember, this is cross-platform. But it's not cross-platform in the fucked up way. This is actually a native binary for every platform that you can build. So this is not, this is not some kind of a HTML embedded browser thing, 300 megabyte runtime, blah, blah, blah. This is a native binary. Go builds native binaries. So if your deployment speed and size and all of that matters, then Go can build very small little binaries that you can push into Kubernetes or wherever, and uh, it's self-contained, blah, 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 all those wonderful things that people care about. But I don't give a shit because I can just do things like that. I can just load images quickly and easily and display them. Okay, cool. So now that, now, that, now that we are experts at loading images, let's go and see if we can do something else. And I will allow for questions a little bit later. No opinions. I don't give a fuck about your opinion. But you can ask questions, and I can refer you to the documentation. But th 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 that's as far as we're going to get. Now, now the game is changing, though, because in the structure, we're putting a little something. We're putting values. We want to keep track of those three values. And we now have a function that's connected to the game structure. And how we call it is we say in update, and notice that update doesn't just return null anymore. Update now goes and calls a function we created called randomized colors, and color is spelled the right way We've got randomized colors, and what does that do? It goes and gives random colors to the values that we're tracking. Everybody with me still so far? Okay. Then in the draw, we've got a new function that we call, and it just screen.fold, and take a wild guess what screen.fold does. Don't tell me, keep it for yourself. We're gonna see if we're right, okay? And what we do is look at main. Main looks almost the same, except there's one new thing there. TPS. Does anybody work in a transactional system where you've got like transactions per second? Right. This is in Go, how you make it go faster. You just say TPS, 10 million, and you're done, right? <laughs> Promise? <laughs> okay. That's ticks, ticks per second, or whatever they call it. But, all right. Beautiful, beautiful. This is the kind of stuff that I used to spend weekends trying to write an assembler when I was a little boy, and you ask why I'm so fucked up. But once again, our main function didn't really change much, and to be honest, we didn't write a lot of code to get this done, right? So far, it's easy and simple, da 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 da. Let's see, let's see if we can do something more. And this time, we see that update does what again? 
Nothing, just returns nil, the fancy null, okay. And then we draw something, and draw's got a thing called screen.set. If, if you are old enough, you will know what a pixel is, okay. So a pixel is a little doiky there on the screen, and if, you, if you're close enough, you can see the little dots on the screen, and that's all a pixel. And I don't want to get into sub-pixels and all that kind of stuff, but the, the thing is, you can set a pixel, you can set a color, and back in the day, when, when, when I started programming, you could make it on or off. So you could have, you could have a green pixel or no pixel. So or an, or an amber colored pixel or no pixel. Later we got fancy and you could have a pixel 16 different colors. And then 256 colors and then the world just went to shit with all these high def and whatever. So you can't keep track of it anymore. But anyway, so we can anywhere on the screen we can go and we can say, that pixel, I want that particular color. Does that make sense, what, 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 what set does? Question. Yes. Because nil is cooler. <laughs> nil is so much cooler. Void is four characters, no is three. So, so on a big code base, you sp you're saving millions of characters, like, like millions. Do you know how much disk space costs on AWS? Bro, we're trying to save money here. Work with me, work with me. <laughs> right, so uh, I don't know, they were drunk. You know, it was one of those things. So we, we've got the little draw function looks different, and then once again, our main function looks pretty much familiar, right? And we know where things go wrong. Things go wrong in? All right, no, you guys, you guys are ready for the big leagues. All right, and this is what we did. So there's a reason that we're doing all these little things in isolation. We are learning a little bit about the things that you can do with Go graphics-wise. And this is, this, is, this is the thing that I love about this kind of stuff, is I can start out small, and I can start adding things, one after the other, and build up to something. And what I love about Go is that's how I can, can build enterprise software and stuff as well. So I can go and I can add features and move them around and everything. And because I don't have object orientation and all that kind of fluff that keeps in the way, I can really reason about what I'm doing. And because I'm handling errors where they happen, it's easy for me to start looking at where did a bug happen. Because I know if something went wrong with loading the image file, I can go look inside the init method in this case and figure out where did that go wrong and how. I don't have to go through a whole core hierarchy to figure out where it is, okay? So again, time is of the essence. The less time I spend finding the bug, the more profit I make. So, so like I said, if you want to know how to con in consulting, come see me afterwards. I'll teach you all the tricks. Um, I know a good lawyer as well, which you're going to fucking need. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now, now we're getting fancy. We're loading twice as many images. So two. But I mean, still, it's, it's, it's like 100% more, right? And we're putting some stuff inside our structure. And the structure, you can think of it kind of like a, like a memory space that you want to reserve, where you want to have these associated values saved to each other. And update, you'll see now, calls a little function that we created. And inside that function, we have some values that we update and da da da. Nobody really cares about what's happening there. But if you care about it and you quickly read it, anybody who's done any kind of development will quickly be able to read what's going on there and kind of grok what's going on. And I've helped some teams migrate from other languages to Go. Because it's such a simple language that even I can understand it, it's very easy to teach it to other people. It doesn't have fancy tricks or keywords or async or any of that kind of bullshit that nobody knows what's going on. So you can just read the code, and what you read is what's happening. It doesn't have, it doesn't have any kind of implicit fuck you, Scala, and all that, where, where you think the code does something, but because someone imported something else, it does something completely different. So, so Go is nice and simple and quick and easy, right? I love that. I love the fact that I don't have to think because that's just one more benefit to being a consultant. You don't, you just sit, you just get paid. I do have to look pretty, so, but other than that, I can just sit there. So draw, draw, 
now looks a little bit more complicated, right? So we do some, some hard work here in Draw. We create a thing that we, that's the Draw image options, and that helps us to scale images, it helps us to rotate images, and it helps us to translate images. And translate is just moving stuff around in space. Okay, so now it's, can we get security to throw that guy out? <laughs> right, so now we also have an init because we have some values and stuff that we need to set up. So our main function looks a little bit different to previously, but it's still the main function, it's still the, it's still the key culprit and whatever goes wrong, we still have a TPS. In this case, we're asking for 25 ticks per second, 25 updates per second. I think that's a fine enough screen rate for what we are trying to achieve. You don't have to do 60 frames per second all the time. Um, you know, we've got to save like, the planet, or okay, and, uh, uh, and save power and stuff for ESCOM's sake. Um, so we, we have a little bit less TPS. And now we call our init, which returns a pointer to the game, and Go has pointers. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, Go has pointers. Go doesn't have C or C++ uh, style pointers. So you, you're not gonna foot gun yourself all the time. Go's pointers are just like, you can either call by value or call by reference. What I love about Go is it's explicit about whether you're calling something by value or by reference. So you can see this is being called by reference because it's a pointer, or you can see it's being called by value because it's not a pointer, so it's a copy. So depending on what you want to do, that might be more memory efficient, it might just be more efficient in general, or you want to send it into a function that's gonna change it and send it back, or well, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons. But the thing is, it's an explicit language. If I read it, I can understand what's going on there. There's nothing behind the scenes that's going to trip me up. So now, if we run this, well, this is where it gets dicey. Okay, right. So this, this, is, this is brilliant stuff, right? So now we have the images that we loaded, we're putting them on the screen, and we're starting to move them around, right? So this, this is now starting to become something that we can actually use. <laughs> So, and um, yeah, good lord, that's ugly. But anyway, so now I want to show you something else, and I'm basically just going to run this one, actually, because our time's running low, and I don't have a lot of sweeties left, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem. So this is, this is old school stuff. Oh, damn it, I was going for his ear. Enjoy. So... We can set pixels. We can, we can draw pixels on the screen. With pixels, you can draw anything because a pixel is on or? Bullshit, a pixel's a different color. <laughs> this is a color display. Look there, it's got color. Okay, so pixel can be different colors. So in this case, everything is green. And the reason for it is I stole this. I'm just saying, I stole it. I didn't want to write all this. But you can do math. You guys remember math from when you were in school and university and stuff, right? So you can do math and you can figure out a point on the circle and you can plot that point on the circle. You've got the radius and da, da, da. So this is what you can do. You can set the pixels one by one if you really want to. So EBIT Engine allows you to do this. And back in the day, some of you here will remember that. That was the only way that you could draw to the screen, pixel by pixel. Even functions that drew a line, literally was just a for loop running between the points dotting pixels. So we didn't have vector graphics and all that kind of stuff. Because you have pixels, you can do this kind of thing. But our main function still looks the same. Do you know how much you get with EBIT Engine for free? Because all of this shit just works across all the platforms. And now, now that we have that, there we go, okay. Now that we can draw circles and all that kind of stuff, let's see if we add all of this together. All right, so this is where I wanted to get. Back in the day, this would take you a day or two to put together to write and make it happen because languages were cumbersome, drivers were difficult, you had to load, all the kind of stuff, and everything was quite a mission. Now you can do this with enterprise-grade languages. 
And this is actually a fun way to learn a new language if you really want to learn Go. I would, I would recommend that you spend some time doing stuff like this because it's fun. And it teaches you how do you declare a bunch of constants in Go? How do you declare a bunch of your own types in Go? Because every little circle that you saw there is called a little bouncer, and the bouncer has state that it has to keep track of. And that state could be, a, could be a transaction that you're pushing through a system or something. It's the same kind of thing. Game development, simple game development, simple animation, simple things like this, teach you real-world skills. It's far more fun to do something like this to learn a new language than to write a fucking CSV parser that takes credit card numbers and obfuscates them. I mean, seriously. How much fun is that? There's no fun in that. But the same skills apply, believe it or not. The exact same skills apply. So when, when I'm at companies and I'm teaching them how to use a new programming language, I don't, I, don't teach, I don't teach JavaScript, but everything else is fine. How to use a new programming language. The first thing I do is I figure out, is there a way to do graphics in this language? Is there a way to do simple graphics in this language? Can we put something on the screen that just bounces around? That's all I want to do. Because just with that, I can teach you types. I can teach you functions. I can teach you flow control, you know, if, else, all that kind of stuff. I can teach you how to, how to do um, uh, functions added to structs. I can go and I can say, hey, look, Go has a very cool range function that I can go, I can iterate over a collection and it will be safe for me to iterate over a collection so I can't run out of bounds, all that kind of stuff. Go has that for me. This is an easy, simple way to introduce this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, we're still using that same simple draw Circle thing, yeah, that quick and easy, very simple. You can write that in your sleep. <laughs> Got the draw, and look, yeah, our main function hasn't really changed all that much. We just have one or two things that we initialize and we keep track of, right? So the last one is, I don't know if, the, if this makes, um, oh, this, this one, this one, sorry, I, I actually do want to show you this one because for, there are one or two people in the audience that's going to ask me about this. Yes, you can write your own shaders in here as well. So what we do is we, we create a shader, da 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 And there's the, there's the OpenGL shader. People that's done OpenGL will recognize this. So it's just a simple fragment shader. The stage just returns the color of that position. And that now gets used to draw the circle. And there you can see there's the whole way that you can, oh, you can access OpenGL from this Go language. And there we have the same thing just quickly done with OpenGL. So that, that's shaders running there, da, 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 da. Um, I don't know if this is worth going for. No, not really. What I wanted to show was this, so that we can have some time for questions and regrets. This is simple, right? This is the output that I want from one of my classes where I teach people how to use Go. So I guide them towards this without giving them this. So please don't go and tell people that this is available online because they're going to cheat So and they pay a fuck ton of money to have me humiliate them in class. So let them be humiliated um, on their own. And the things you can do is you can interact. You can have interactivity. You can make things bigger. You can make things smaller. And I don't know if anybody notices, but we have multiple threads running here because we're monitoring input and all of that kind of stuff. So we can drag the window around. And despite the fact that we're dragging the window around, things are still running. Da, da, da. So we've got thread management, the whole works, everything in here with Go. And it just works. And this will work on Windows, it will work on Mac, it will work on, uh, on, on Linux, and it will work on the web. One language, one API language, basically, a back-end language, a really cut language, if you, if you start comparing it with all the other languages. But because it's such a simple and approachable language, you can do really cool stuff with it. And I love Go for the simple reason that it's quick for me to take people and onboard them and show them how it works. You can learn to be productive in Go in a day. I am not kidding you. 
Go watch the free code camp video. Those people actually know Go other than me, and they can teach you how to be a Go developer in a day. This, that's not a joke. All right, questions. Fuck all opinions. No opinions, please. No opinions. Any questions? What did you like before Go? I hated computers before Go. I despised computers before Go. There was nothing before Go. Go is the alpha and the omega. And before Go, um, I used to do Kotlin. So, and Kotlin is actually all right, believe it or not. Uh, there's a mic. There's a mic. You can sing. Hello. Yeah. All right. Um, does Go work on mobile? Yes. Great. Yes. You can, you, there, are, there are some ports and stuff for, for, for Go to use on a mobile. And EBIT Engine, I have gotten some of this stuff working on mobile before, and then it crashed. But I think it was me. So I don't think, uh, because I've seen some games in the Play Store that have been released, and apparently there's a game on the iOS store as well that was written in, in EBIT Engine. I don't know exactly how that works. I haven't done that. But on Android, yes, I, I, have, I have done some, some Android work in Go. Which do you prefer between Go and Rust? Which do I prefer between Go and Rust? It depends on who's signing the check. <laughs> so, so, but in all honesty, if I'm building, if I'm building a CLI, or if I'm building something that's really, 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 really performance sensitive Rust every day of the week. If I'm doing something that needs to scale enormously and where I don't have six months to develop it, go every day of the week. It's faster to develop in. It is not as fast a runtime as Rust. It can never be because of how Rust is designed. But I can do in a week what you can't do in a month in Rust. I can do in Go just because the language is more productive. I will never touch your performance. Ever. I will get close, but I will never touch it. Anything else? Uh, it seems South Africa is a bit slow with adoption of Golang as a, as a backend language. Is that something you've experienced? Like, or there's a preference for older stuff like you? So, South Africans are a bit slow. That is. <laughs> We, 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 as a nation, we are a bit slow. It's, it's, it's a lot to do with, with KFC. But, but also, I think, I think there's a lot of investment in other languages in tech already. So a big corp corporate, like, like one of the banks or one of the insurers or something, has spent millions and millions building a Java or a .NET or whatever app that doesn't work for them. So they are very hesitant to move to a new technology. What I can tell you is that a lot of the startups I work with are more tech agnostic, where they come to me and say, we want to do X, Y, and Z. What do you recommend? And looking at what they want to do, I often say, because I don't know where you're going and what you're going to do, I'm going to go with Go. Because if I need to, scale this massively and have a crap load of concurrent work, sorry, I meant to say a fuck load of concurrent work, <laughs> then I can do it in Go because I don't have any of those restrictions. And it's still a productive enough language that I don't fall behind, let's say, TypeScript or Python or something like that. Plus, I can charge a fuck ton more for Go. So, <laughs> anybody else? Why can you charge more for Go? <laughs> because... Once I've written the code, who's going to maintain it? None of you assholes are. <laughs> right. Anything else? You got any production systems in Go? I do. I have one production system in Go. Um, how much money you got? Because I'm going to get sued if I name him. <laughs> but it's a bank. Believe it or not. It's a bank. And what it does is it pulls. You guys know, know, know how debit orders and stuff work? So this pulls a whole bunch of debit order data and it does validations against a whole bunch of other sources. So I have, in Go, you've got this concept of channels. Those are threads that you're running. So I validate a couple of things against, uh, let's, say, let's say, a register of IDs and a register of bad credit people or a register of bad debit order people. I validate a few things against that. And what I like about Go is that I don't do the hard work of managing the threads. So you've got Go routines, which are very lightweight threads. And depending on how many Go routines you have, Go will spin up actual threads to handle all of them in the background. So on some days, my app uses two threads, or, or you know, two CPU threads. And then in a busy day, it uses 16. 
And then the ops guys are cucking on me because I'm bringing the server down. Oh, get a bigger server, bitch. But <laughs> the thing is, I don't deal with that complexity. I don't have to worry about that. I've got Go routines in channels that talk to each other and wait for each other. And the busier it gets, the more native threads are being spun up on my behalf and handled on my behalf. We've got a minute and a half. Does anybody have anything a, I've else? I've been given a mic, so. I just have, you were mentioning about you, you use the game development for teaching, but do you have a process that you use when you're learning a new language that helps you learn it quicker? The same. I, I, I usually build the game of life because I suck at life and I'm starting to figure out how it works. So, I, so I, I write the game of life in the language because it's a paradigm that I understand. So all I have to learn is I have to learn how to do something in the language because I already know what I want to do. And then what I do next is once I've got it working in the console, I go like, can I make this look fancy? Can I give it some graphics? Cool. You had a question. Go monolith or go microservices. <sighs> I, my personal experience between mono, monoliths and microservices has been start with monolith and then when I need to split out into microservices. But I architect it in such a way that I can do that. Um, interfaces, you know, all that kind of stuff. The, the challenge is that often where I, where I play is in the startup space and money is an issue. And it's cheaper to deploy a monolith on light sale or something like that, than it is to deploy a couple of, of, of 100 lambda functions or something. It, it just, at the end of the day, it's just cheaper, simpler. I can emulate the whole thing in Docker on my machine. I can run it on my desktop. I can do all kinds of things. And then when we do start hit, hitting scaling issues, I can say, you know what, let's split this out into microservices. But that is open to debate. Some people d uh, differ with that, and you know, they're wrong, and that's fine. But you know, it's cool. Time's up. Thank you so much for, for attending.